or install WSUS. This computer is already joined to the domain. So normally when we get to the feature part of the screen, we just skip it and just go to next. But on this time, we're going, to, we're going to install the default features, the required features, and then install one additional feature. So I'm going to install this Windows Server Update Services. These are the required features. Now when I click Next, these are optional features I could add. I want to add this feature right here. This right here will be used for our reporting feature. So the WSUS server has some reports that we can use and this is for the reports. If I scroll over, uh, you know, it, it ne the WSUS needs 3.5. By default it includes 4.5. But for that reporting feature we need to, to add this, um, uh, there's a report function in, in this that we need. Click next. Now, if you wanted to use another database that you already have configured on this server, say you already have SQL Server installed on this and you're using it for something else, well, you can add an additional database to an existing database server if you have one. Otherwise, we're going to install this database that's used strictly by WSUS. It doesn't give us a browse function, um, so I, I'm not sure why it's not. I'm sure this will be something fixed in future ver versions, but um, let's just put it C updates. Click next. Next. And it's going to install a database. This is not, a, uh, it's going to install a website. This is not a website for users to interact with. This is actually a web application that when your server or when your clients connect to the WSUS server, they'll be talking to this web application to get the updates and report <laughs> what updates they have. see what this error is about. It's not going to create that folder for you. Uh, it, it doesn't create it automatically? Oh, no. mouse over it and it'll display the whole Oh, it, it's okay because we're going to get the source files from Windows Update. That's fine. Click install. Uh, yeah, I should have checked restart. So I'm going to launch post installation task. This says what we're going to update, where we're going to update it from. Well, actually, this is the configuration of the server. Everything we configure right here, we can actually configure once we're inside the utility. It's 
sweating. Did you work? Did you start it up? Taking forever? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you have this wizard. Installation, the installation. I don't remember seeing that screen. Where is that path? Uh, I, I the C. The How'd you get to that screen? Showing your steps. Uh, you, you can't launch. Wait. It's already there. So what is this? Okay. Guys, is everyone right at the screen? I don't know if you people are behind, but. Yes. Right click on this. Go to the Windows. Okay, so I'm going to start this uh, wizard to configure the WSUS server. Guys, everyone should have launched that post installation task. And then we're at this stage. Okay, you need to know if you're connected to a firewall or anything, any proxy server. Right now, we're directly connected to the internet. Our upstream server. Where we're going to get the updates from will be Microsoft. Click next. Are you, are you there? No. Um, you were in options and then which, which option did you select? Uh, the very bottom. The very bottom one. To relaunch the wizard. The third configuration. Right. Okay. Click next. Now, if you had other WSUS servers already configured for your network, I would probably point to that server. Make a note of that port number, though. 8530. When we set up our policy of telling our clients where to connect, we need to remember that port number. So synchronize the Win Microsoft Windows update. That's who we're going to get our updates from, Microsoft. You only have to do that on the first server. Every other server can point to this server. Uh, yeah, we have no proxy server. Okay, in 2008, this had a lot of problems. Right here. I don't know if we'll have those problems. So you would click that and then one out of three would fail. You apply all the patches and try to read again, and it would work again. So, did we do the user proxy server one thing? We're not. We're not using a proxy server. Uh, yes, 
But Microsoft doesn't call it a proxy server. They always they, they change the name. This this time around, it's an NPS server. We haven't done it yet. Yes, you could. You could use it to filter. Instead of using a NAT router to get out, we can have one machine that's connected to the internet, and everyone goes to that machine and says, I want this web page. It goes out, brings the web page back, looks at it. If you want to, it could filter. Let's say, don't show any, don't show many websites that have the word leg in the name or some other inappropriate term. And then it will sanitize the page, see if there's any bad scripts if you want, uh, and then give the web page to the client. You ever heard of blue code? Blue code Guys, we're going to click next, and it's going to ask what language do we want to download for? Just to make it simpler. Japanese. Yeah. Simplified Chinese. Yes. Someone had a question? I'm just going to do English. <laughs> you sure has to make it well, it's going to do a lot less downloads. Okay. Uh, can you add to other languages? Oh. Yeah. OK, uh, it's the next screen where it says choose products. I'm going to unselect Office. In real life, I do want to support that, but just to make it simpler, no, it will, listen, it will download updates for products not on this server. Because remember, this is supposed to be supporting other machines. So those products might be on those other machines. But can we just uncheck all these Windows 8? But we're going to do Windows 12, because we're going to be dealing with Windows 12. So I'm going to uncheck this and just choose Windows 12. You, you, uh, you would only want to check what you have in your organization. If you have 2008 R2 servers, 2012, Windows 7, Windows 8, you, you want to check all those. So you just uncheck all the Windows? Yeah, just... Then recheck Windows Server 2012. Just to keep this process short. Next. And you can define what you want to download. Um, critical updates. Uh, definition updates. A lot of people don't download drivers. Do you, if, if anyone installs a NVIDIA card, you probably download the NVIDIA driver directly from the NVIDIA website. Well, Windows also has a NVIDIA driver that they can supply with you, for you. So you might not want that Microsoft driver. It's much smaller. Uh, it's much smaller, but it might not have as much features, you know. So it all depends on your preference. So some people don't like installing the Windows drivers. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, I would certainly download updates, critical updates. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, hold on one second. Broadly released and frequently updated software to obtain an additional additions to a product definition database. Yeah, yeah. That means nothing. Hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, What's about definition nothing? Database? Like virus, yeah, antivirus programs, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what he's referring to. It's referring to virus definitions, it's trying to look for the fingerprint of a virus or malware. Okay, so yes, you do want to update that. You can update service packs, whatever you want to update. I'm not going to update service packs. Uh, in real life, I would probably want to do updates. These updates aren't security flaws. They're just updates to the software. So I'll, I'll leave that checked. Uh, if you want to update your MMC um, tools, you can do that here. And we're going to synchronize automatically. And I'm going to change this. to 9.15. So it starts immediately. Change it to PM. And 
begin the initial synchronization right now. And it's saying that in real life, you should probably not host that web application without creating the certificate. So your, your clients communicate with the web server securely. Uh, you should probably create uh, computer groups, um, meaning I want to put all my servers in one group, all my clients in another group, all my Windows 7 clients in one, so I can then focus on what updates they get. Um, I could say all, I could separate, say I have some Dell machines and some HP machines. I could, you know, they each require different drivers. I can make groups for that. So whatever group, whatever, however you want to define your groups is up to you and based on your organization. And then put the group, uh, computers in those groups with a group policy. You don't want to manually do it. So you can create a group policy that says any, that you can actually scan the computer and say if you're part of, if you have this motherboard or this driver installed in your machine, you should be part of this group. So you don't have to manually add computers to group. Again, the goal there is to be as lazy as possible. I don't want to have to manually find out what type of computer it is and put it in a group. Then auto, auto approve rules. Every day at 9.15, it's going to update these download the um, patches from Windows. If you don't approve the rules and release them to your clients, the server doesn't do anything. So that's going to be a manpower intensive. So you can create a policy that says when, it, when you download an update, automatically approve it and send it out. You could be approving a bad update if you do that. You know, some people like in really secure environments, they update a test machine, if everything goes well, then um, update the rest of the machines. I've actually had updates take down, one time, take down the DC domain controller. Luckily there was two domain controllers. But um, we had to rebuild that DC from a backup and then Microsoft pulled the update. So Microsoft does have some bad updates every once in a while. Click finish, and it's going to synchronize right now. Guys, if you want to change any of those settings we just did, it would be in this first three, first four items. Where we have to get our updates from, what products we download, what uh, language we download and where to put the files when we up when we do our synchronization with the our upstream server now guys if you want to do your automatic approvals that's done right here automatic approval the machine is going to be very slow right now because it's getting updates. to read the verbiage here. When, when an update is in critical security updates, and you can change this by clicking on it. You get that from that verbiage? I'm sorry? That's what you got from the verbiage? Yes. So, so you, you can change this to be that as well, whatever you want. Definition updates. And it could be for all computers or for a group of computers, however you set it up. Well, I'm going to leave it for all. Definition for like security essentials? Uh, yes. Then check that box. I got a um, message that came up that says connect to server. Specify the server to which you want to connect. 
Okay, try to type in the name. If it doesn't close out the dialog box, wait a minute to reopen it. What name do I type in? Okay. Uh, your, your computer name, mine is CS01-VM3, whatever your naming convention was. Guys, once you check it and highlight, once you highlight it, you can actually run a rule manually to approve. So if you don't want to have a rule automatically run, you can just leave the rule in place, uncheck it so it doesn't automatically run, but whenever you want to run it, you can just highlight it and run the rule. Guys, I just waited a minute and that yellow message went away saying I couldn't save. Okay. So go go into the automatic approval under options, then run that rule. I'm gonna, I I checked it so it does. Look, it approved 115 updates for me. So what I'm approving automatically are critical updates, definition updates, security updates, and updates. Right here. Oh, oh um, automatic approvals. No, like what did you let that shows you that what when it approves that that green bar that run rule. Oh, as soon as I highlighted this and click run rule, that green bar came across. Oh, run rule. Yes. Click OK. And um, if you wanted to, you can. Uh, now it says um, Charlie shows that no, your WSUS server cannot be used to register to receive updates. OK, right, because we haven't done a group policy yet. Correct. Okay. OK, so guys, for right now, this is pretty much configured. If I go to updates, I can see all of our updates. All updates. And right now, it's showing me all updates that haven't been approved. I can say approved updates. Any. Then refresh. And then it will show me all the updates. And if you highlight a particular update, it will give you statistical information about that update. How many computers installed with errors, how many with no status, you know. Right now we have no clients using this server yet. And instead of using, looking at all updates, you can look at critical or security updates, whatever you want. If you go to computers, you can see any computer that is using this server. We don't have any just yet. We're going to set up a policy. And once you choose a computer, you can look at that computer's status. So if your organization dictates that you have to apply updates in a timely manner and stuff, this is your proof of when the updates were applied. So for your entire organization, you can choose one computer and say when an update was applied and have a complete graphic, nice report uh, to give to your, you know, you can save and give to your um, credit card company. Um, uh, PCI compliance, it's called. Payment card industry. They have rules. If your organization processes uh, credit cards, they can dictate before we'll allow you to process credit cards from your network, you have to be a secure network based on industry standards. So you can hire, hire a third party company to come in and do scans of your network to verify you're secure. And one of the things they're going to be looking for is all your servers are up to date. And our school has a policy, if we have any server that's not up to date, we as techs have to, we have 24 hours to get it up to date or the school just shuts it off, disconnects it from the network. No questions asked. Um, so the real um, 
they're, they're really big on this being fully updated. And you can use software like this to see if a server is up to date. Uh, and you can do additional reporting right here about all your whole network. They don't support Mac or Linux. No, you can you can update Windows 98. You know, and there's all kind of reports that you can look at right here. If I had additional WSUS servers that were using this server as an update server, I can even look at information about them to see if they're giving the updates to me that they then pass to the clients. I don't have any right now. Okay, so I'm going to create a group policy that all my clients will get to apply updates from this server, not go to um, Microsoft's update server. So what do you think I'm going to do that from? Group policy management. On the? DC. Right, so I'm going to go to my DC and group policy management. Guys, if you have your book, this is on page 70. Uh, 70? Yes. So I want to go into group policy management. So who applies updates? Users. What, what are updates applied to, users or computers? So I'm going to drill down into my force, my domain, my physical domain, and I want to highlight group policy objects. I'm going to right click and create a new group policy. Uh, Alex, are, are you just getting to the point it's just become ludicrous? Is it getting it working? I removed that, I believe I mistake, so where oh. does it come from? Professor, I'm getting failed to connect the server. Uh, well, 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 um, okay, wait a few seconds. Let me go back into the... No, I'm at the WSUS after the install. Okay, I'll close the MNC snap in, wait a few seconds and go back in. Okay. Well, there, we'll find the old book, and in the old book, it gives instructions on how to reinstall the GUI. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to create a new group policy, and I'm going to call it WSU. I could have altered one of my other policies, but just personal preferences. I like to keep my policy small with very small focus and have a lot of policies. So I'm going to click OK. So I created a blank policy. And that was just uh, none of the storage Right. So I'm going to edit that policy. So we have computer configuration settings and user configuration settings. This is the thing, the nature of what we're doing is applying updates. So we apply updates to computers. So it's going to be under computer. Guys, and sometimes these are hard to find. Right now it's real easy because I'm just reading from the book. But in real life I have to search. So go to policies. Administrative templates. Window components. Uh, I'm right here. Oh, 
Let me ask you, are you on this? Do you have this window open? No. Okay, I'm going to close this out. Do you have this window open? Yeah. Okay, right click, then add it. Are, are you here? How's it feel? No, yes. No, nope. I'm gonna go back one more step. Go look right here. Okay, Tools. Okay, policy management, okay. I want you to ex extend force. Okay. Domains, the domain. <coughs> Domains. Okay. Blank. Okay. Right click. New. Yeah, I did that. I did. Good. So Highlight WSUS. Okay. 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 Expand computer configuration. Okay. Expand policy. Expand administrative templates. <coughs> Expand window components. And we're going to scroll down until we see Windows Update. Okay. Because of my small screen resolution, I'm just going to look at the standard view, not the extended. I want to go to guys the, the 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 book only has you do one policy. I wanted to, to show you fully what I would do in real life. So I would configure automatic updates enable that Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to auto-download the update, then notify the user to install it, or would we like to auto-download, uh, auto, uh, then schedule the installation? Let's do that. We'll say every day at, this is midnight, this is noon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Yeah, whatever, whatever time you want. I just want to choose something different so it's so we know that it, it applied. I have to make the screen a little smaller. Okay. So I'm going I'm not going to click OK, because this is a nice feature. If I hit apply. That saves it. Then I could just jump to the next setting. Then click on Enable. Guys, the book says you have to put in the port number at 8530. I never did that before. So I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just going to put CS Computer Station 01 VM 3. The first one says where to get the updates from. And the second one is once you get the updates, who do you report the up, what updates you have? They could be different servers. So right now, this machine is going to receive information about the updates my clients get. I'm going to click OK. Um,
has anyone seen this message here saying you have updates? Mm -hmm. Down here in this in, in this uh, notification area? How many users do you think in an organization just say, I don't want to deal with it, just don't apply it? Okay. So let's not let them know there are any updates. By going to this one, allow non-administrators to receive update notification. Uh, no, not this one. Sorry, this is not the one I want. This would allow them to see it. I'm going to say... Well, no, uh, disable any... Yeah. Well, right. If, that would, if we disable that, that would prevent them from notice, seeing the notice. Okay. Um, Okay, this one right here. Turn on recommended updates. That would allow, that would say, enable the, the updating automatically, which is what we want. This is important. Uh, some of them won't understand it based on the OS level, you know, because they didn't support that feature. This, this is important. This could cause a lot of problems. By enabling this rule, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to not allow auto restart. If a person is in the middle of a Word document and they've been typing forever and they haven't saved it and you auto restart, they could lose their, their work. So you could say, do not auto restart if a user is logged in. Click OK. You can also... Um, Delayed starts, get rid of the prompt. But for right now, this is uh, good enough. Okay, so I'm just clicking the close button on that policy. So we've got three enabled and one disabled. Four enabled. Yeah. See which one you're missing. Which one? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to close that out. Was there any other settings on that or was it just enabled? Just enabled. Recommended updates. Uh, so I'm going to highlight my domain, local, and I'm going to link that GPO to the domain. Because if you just create the group policy and don't link it to a container, no one will get that policy. By linking it to the container, and that's all an OU, uh, our domain is, is a container of objects, all computer objects in this domain would then get this policy. And you choose that policy. So I'm sorry, where did you get to that? Right click, link an existing GPO And incidentally, that policy is going to be stored in the sysvol folder and replicated to all DCs in our network, and clients will download it from the sysvol folder every half hour. And that's where we GP force it? Right. Guys, even though I'm on the DC, this DC does not, hasn't applied that policy yet. 
So if you want to force a policy, do GP update force. You could specify computer policy. I'm just going to do everything. Can you do this in Yes, you should be able to. I'll type it again. GP update Thank you. You're welcome. Now I'm going to go to start. I want to type updates. Update. Go to settings. What's the difference between this and this? Uh, one is new and one is have been done. Metro app, regular app. <coughs> right. Windows 8 puts all the Metro apps on the left, all the regular apps on the right. I'm not going to use a Metro app. I just want to use the regular app. So click right here. This will take us to that traditional update window that we're used to. Right. Um, just to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I guess not on server. But it takes you to the same window. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to go see which one you did. Uh, update, settings. I just said view, uh, well, install optional updates. It doesn't matter which one you install. I want to go to change settings. Which one you choose. It'll take you to the same window. Okay. Um, Uh, so update settings I'm choosing this you could have chose that that will work too so change settings is it grayed out because it's being set where look right here some settings are managed by your system administrators see more information and it's basically saying there's a policy uh, so you can't change that which is good your users can't either. If you want to change it, you have to do it through the policy. Okay, so um, we can check online uh, for updates. Are you checking for updates now? I just manually did it. And I want to unassign computers, any, and I'm just trying to try to refresh. I'm on my WSUS server. Pretty soon they'll all do this. Even on the WSUS server, right now on the WSUS server, I didn't up update my group policy. So it's still on the old policy, meaning go to Windows Update. I got an error. Oh, what did it say? Windows cannot search for new updates. There was a problem check for updates. Okay, you might have, let's go back to your policy, you might have typed a wrong name. So I'm going to go to Tools, Group Policy Management. Right. Okay, WSUS. Right click it and edit it. Okay. 
drill down policy, administrative yeah. templates. Window components and Windows updates. Okay. And then you want to click on this one. Specify Internet Microsoft Update Service Location. Is your comp look at this, make sure you have no typos here. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and your computer name of the, your WSUS server. Is that what you called your server? The hyphen everything. And their forward slashes, not backslashes? Uh, here, do, do me a favor. To, on your DC, Open up a command prompt and say ping CS09VM3. See if it comes back with an IP. I'm using a NetBIOS name there. Uh, we need to go through the event viewer and see what that issue is. Um, and you're you're doing this from the DC. Uh -huh. uh, and your your WSUS server is up to, up running, no problem. Well, I mean, there's it says events, it says uh, warning Windows server update, server application. I don't know what it is. Um, okay. Did have an error earlier. What was the error earlier? I don't remember. I told you. I think I said something. Um, did you do automatic approval? So you have stuff approved? Maybe we just have to give the DC some time to and try to go back and look at the updates again. Try to do a manual update again. Yes. All right. When it connects, uh, when it, well, it gets the um, downloads, shouldn't the computer show up in like the computer containers in WSUS? Uh, not immediately, because just because I downloaded it doesn't mean that client has reported back to me. You know, and that might take some time. Maybe update this um, when your policy, update it to, guys, if you want to update your policy to earlier so when we come back we can look at it again. So here's what I want to do, guys. I'm just going to, we're not done with the WDS. I'm going to stop this video.